Hey everyone! We're always trying to figure out different easy ways to animate textures in Blender, and some of our methods we've covered haven't been capable of handling large quantities of textures easily, especially with Eevee's texture limit per material. An image sequence allows for using as many textures as you want, but has some major annoyances that I'm not the biggest fan of. So let's fix the image sequence with math. I'm going to use link size, but it'll work with any texture. Switching to the shader editor, here's his eye material. Delete this texture node. Before we do anything else, make sure the textures you want to animate are named sequentially so that Blender can put them in order. Shift A, add an image sequence node, and select all of your images. As many as you want. I've used hundreds of images at once and it's always been fine, so I don't think there's any limit. Usually this frame amount is correct by default, but sometimes it isn't, so make sure it's set to how many textures you're using. In my case it's 14. Connect to the shader, open up the timeline, and switch to a later frame. Then enable cyclic and auto refresh. Cyclic will loop the image sequence over and over, auto refresh makes the frame changes show up in the viewport automatically. So now we can see the main issue I have with the image sequence node. It's always animating. And there aren't any input sockets for these fields, so you might think you're just stuck having to deal with this node as is, but we can actually fix this. We need to start off by setting up a driver with several values. Right click this offset field and choose add driver. Switch this channel to single property. Click this box and navigate to scene. Choose your scene here. Under path, enter frame underscore current, and change this field to I think any name you want. I find it works best if you just use frame underscore current. If this pops up, choose allow execution, unless you're worried about hacking yourself. Right click and edit this driver, and change this field to say frame underscore current. Having everything spelt correctly in here is essential to make everything work. So now we're using the current frame in this field, if the offset doesn't change, make sure you've spelled everything correctly. Right click and edit driver. Click here to add an input variable, change to material, and choose the material you're currently working on. You can find the name in the material tab, or right here. Right click on the frames field, and choose copy data path. Edit our driver again, click here, and paste with control V. Change the variable name to frame underscore duration, and the value should switch over to 14, or whatever amount of frames you're using. You can type it in up here if you want to confirm everything is set up correctly. Shift A, add a value node, change it to zero for now. Edit our driver again, add another input variable, choose material and the current material. Copy the data path from the value node, go back into the driver, and paste it in this field with control V. Change the name to default underscore value. Type it in up here again to confirm that it's working. All right, now that we have everything we need to make this function, edit the driver and type in this. We'll also put this in the video description. This took me a while to work out, quite, quite a while. Now something interesting has happened. Scroll through the timeline and you'll see the offset changes automatically to keep the texture stationary. But if we change the value node, the texture changes and is unaffected by the position of the timeline. So hooray, we've done it. Now you don't have to figure out what offset you need to use every frame. As far as I can tell, this all updates automatically even in rendered view. If you want to, we can take this a step further by adding an easy to keyframe controller with a geometry node modifier. Switch to the geometry node editor. We want an input field, so add a math node, connect to this socket, and delete it right away. In the side end menu, select the value and change these fields. I clamp my ranges to the amount of images I have. Copy the data path of the input on the geometry node, and edit the material driver one last time. Add another input variable, in this field select the object with the geometry nodes, and paste the data path here with control V. Change the name to input underscore 5, and in the expression field, replace the default value with input 5. Now we essentially have a texture animation modifier. I found this extremely helpful when animating multiple textures in the same scene. You can add and name as many values as you wanted to one geometry node modifier and have all the controls in a single modifier that by hovering over the values and hitting I can keyframe quickly. The main downside that I've found to the geometry node method is that in rendered view the changes don't automatically update in the viewport. You either have to move the timeline or switch from rendered view and then back to it, but as far as I can tell from testing it's just a viewport thing, the renders work correctly. So there we have it! Finally a solution for the image sequence node! And some other stuff because I can't control myself and stick to one topic per video. Thank you for watching, I hope this helps! I've found it incredibly useful, and hopefully at some point Blender just adds a little checkbox that turns off auto animation. Please like and subscribe, let us know if you have any suggestions for videos or questions, help us grow our channel by sharing our video, it helps us a ton. Thanks again, 
Stay safe. I love you all. Goodbye.